Welcome to my channel Living Linux. In this video, I want to show you how to install Olama on the Banana Pi F3 with the Space Mid. Uh, I think I have the K1, but you can also run it on the M1 Risk Five processor. So I saw this video from Hauk Langley, I hope I pronounced that correctly, where he shows that he is running Olama on the SpaceMit M1 RISC-V CPU. So I asked him uh, two things. So one of the things is, is it easy to compile Olama for RISC-V? And he pointed me to his GitHub page. And the other thing is that um, in my previous video, I forced the installation of GCC 14 because uh, we need to have vector instructions and we need to have GCC 14. And unfortunately, uh, it was a bit of a hassle to get that installed with Bianbu version one. Uh, I will put a link to that video in the description of the video. So I'm not going to talk about the installation of GCC 14. Uh, just check the previous video. Um, so he also replies that it's not really certain if GCC 14 will come with Bianbu version 2. So we'll have to see uh, with which version of Bianbu GCC 14 will come. So that's, um, yeah, just one of the setup considerations. So here we have um, his GitHub page and it's a fork of the Olama page, GitHub page. Well, unfortunately, you can't install it like this. Um, so, yeah, the manual install instructions, uh, I don't think you can really use that, but you can go to the, well, let's just say development page. And there they say you need CMake, you need Go and GCC. So sudo apt install go cmake gcc. Um, perhaps in our case gcc-14, just to be sure. Um, so depending if gcc-14 is available in the repository and otherwise you can force it. Um, so you can uh, clone this repository so you can just uh, let's just say type uh, git clone and then you need to copy the URL well I already did that so I'm not going to execute it here um, so once you have cloned the repository, you can go into the directory and then it should be a matter of, hold on, executing go generate with these characters behind it and go build. And once everything is compiled, then you should be able to start it. Now I did run into an issue and yeah, if you don't follow the normal installation, I think 
the uh, service doesn't get installed correctly so let's just see if you go to the manual install instructions if it wants to go there yeah there we go so here they say how to do that and then they also give the instructions to create a service file so if you want to do it in a more cleaner way in the proper way then these are the instructions to set up the service but you can also do it quick and dirty just to start olama surf in one terminal and run olama in another terminal session so mm, let's see so in one terminal session we um, start the service And let's just say if we start this one, yeah, then in my case, I run into the issue of running out of memory. Yeah, they don't call it large language models for nothing. So what I did was also a bit of quick and dirty. I went with a swap file. Uh, you can also go with a swap partition. Uh, it is advised to do it uh, on an SSD, but I was a bit lazy and I did it on the micro SD card. So that's not the fastest way to do things. Uh, this example is for a one gigabyte swap file. Uh, I went with four gigabytes, so you have to multiply this by four. And just for consistency also change the uh, name of the swap file to four gigabyte so I already did these steps so then now I only need to enable it so let's see in the system monitor so here you can see swap is not available Now if we do it like this, so I have a four gigabyte swap file. And here you can see that the swap file is immediately available. So now if we start Olama with Gemma 2, with the two billion parameter model file, can probably also see that it starts consuming more and more memory Now you can also see that it starts consuming more and more swap file. It froze for a couple of seconds, but now it's continuing again. So like I said, uh, I'm using a swap file on a micro SD card, so that's not the fastest thing. And yeah, it's not really advised to do it, but if you have enough patience, then you can do it.
So now you can see that it started. So you can start with just uh, hello. And it looks like that uh, Gemma likes to use smileys. Now we can do a question. So this is the speed that you get on the space mid uh, with a swap file on a micro SD card. Um, we'll just let it run. Uh, at the end, we do get the uh, all the statistics about the speed. But meanwhile, I want to show you something else. You can also run moon dream but that was a uh, really slow um, so i just took a screenshot so you can ask uh, what's in this image and then you need to supply the path to the image and as you can see that took more than one hour and yeah i was expecting it to be a bit faster but perhaps things still need to be optimized who knows uh, anyway so this was the image that i used for moon dream Now, this one is still going and uh, we'll let it run to the end so that we get the statistics about the speed. So yeah, just to summarize, it's um, interesting to see that we can run Olama on RISC-V. I'm not really sure if it will run with Risk Five Factor version 0 0.7. Um, I can try to do that with my Litchi console. Um, but at least we know for sure that it does run with Risk Five Factor version 1.0. And I think they also uh, say that with newer kernels that perhaps we get like, um, I think I've read something around 10% speed increase. Uh, although you also have to wonder that it's not always uh, all the instructions that get 10% faster. So we have to wait and see if it uh, also has some positive impact on the vector instructions so this one is um, going towards the end it's almost there but I think this is um, well it's not fast but I think it's, it's still acceptable and yeah that's that's why I was a bit disappointed about Moon Dream 2.
So it looks like uh, Gemma is a bit uh, talkative. And it's interesting to see that you're invited to tell what you think is the meaning of life. So here you can see the speed statistics. Like I said, it's it's not fast, but it's it's good to see that that we can run it, and um, I think in the future it will only get better. So I think we can quit it like this, and then we can. Kill this session. So, yeah, a, a big thank you to Hauk Langley for making the patches to make it work on Risk Five. And um, who knows when we get more powerful Risk Five systems that this will also get a lot faster. So that's all for now and I hope to see you again in my next video.